the Biden administration weighing its options on how to respond to Sunday's drone attack by an Iranian-backed militia group that killed three U.S. troops in Jordan. Joining us right now with his thoughts on how to strike back at Iran is retired U.S. Navy Admiral James Stavridis, who is a former NATO Supreme Allied Commander. He's now Carlyle Group's Global Affairs Vice Chair and an NBC News Chief International Analyst. And, Admiral, what do you think? What is the appropriate response? I think uh, what the administration is going to look for, if you will, Becky, is kind of a Goldilocks solution. In other words, what they've been doing, a series of tit-for-tat, very surgical uh, precision strikes, that's not working clearly. On the other hand, they don't want to broaden this thing into a major regional war. They're going to try and find something in the middle. So the word I would focus people on is campaign, meaning it's not going to be a one and done at this point. I think you're going to see uh, a week or two of heavy attacks, but not in Iran itself against Iranian proxies. Probably Iraq, Syria and Yemen would be the three places you're going to see the administration uh, lean in over the next week or two. You say campaign, and I automatically think of an extended war. Um, what are the odds that this does? I mean, we've been talking about this since the very yeah. beginning with the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea. What are the odds at this point that this becomes a more protracted war that requires more American boots on the ground? Uh, I think when we started this conversation before Christmas, Becky, we had it at about 30%. Following the big Houthi maritime operations that have now effectively uh, closed off portions of the Red Sea, we were up about 40 percent. With this killing of American servicemen and women, uh, I think we're probably just under 50 50. Here's the good news, such as it is neither side, certainly the Biden administration, but also the mullahs in Tehran are not looking for a broader war here. As I've said before, they'll fight to the last Houthi. They'll fight to the last Iraqi. They don't want a big, broad regional war with the U.S., and certainly the Biden administration doesn't either. So look for a campaign over a couple of weeks, not a full-blown war campaign, but one that is a sustained series of attacks over the next week or two. And at that point, I think Iran will, in fact, cease and desist from the continuing attacks, and particularly those that target Americans. If the mullahs in Tehran don't want this, then why haven't they stopped it? Do they have such little power over these groups that they are training and providing weapons for? No, they have the power to do this. They have organized, trained, equipped, and effectively are directing these operations. The reason is... They still see opportunity to do three things. Number one, demonstrate to the world that they are uh, capable of taking on the superpower. Number two, uh, in a time in which Israel is very much looking inwardly, they want to put pressure on Israel uh, and, and pressure in support, if you will, of the Palestinians. And number three, and you're showing a lot of uh, internal uh, photography right now. They have a domestic audience. They've got problems inside Iran. They see this as a way to, to speak to their public about how they can rally and fight the Americans. So those three things have occurred. They haven't stopped yet because we haven't hit them hard enough is the short answer. Well, then the idea of not hitting them harder seems like it just tempts them to do more. And by the way, we always talk about how this is the government in Iran that's the problem, not the people. But some of those pictures point to a different different thought. Indeed, I think the mullahs are very effectively mobilizing public opinion here. And that's why I think it's unlikely we will strike inside Iran, at least in the short term. What I'm looking for is strikes against Iranian guard uh, outside of Iran that are supporting, training, organizing these proxy groups, as well as larger level of strikes against the proxy groups. So again, it's trying to find that middle path between the pinprick strikes we've been doing and going downtown Tehran. There's still trade space 
militarily where I think these operations are going to land. I, I'd heard it posited that one potential solution might be to allow the Israelis to do what they've wanted to do for a long time, which is go strike directly in Iran. Wouldn't be us, but maybe we stop telling them to not do it. Uh, certainly all options are on the table. Working with allies in the region is on the table. Don't forget this recent strike landed in Jordan, one of our closest allies, very good intelligence services. And one other thing we haven't spoken about, Becky, U.S. and its allies could use cyber to go after Iran's economy, its oil and gas. Stuxnet. So there are a yeah. lot of options on the table. What about Saudi Arabia? How does it play in all of this? Uh, the crown prince, who's effectively leading the kingdom, of course, um, wants this to die down. Uh, he is trying to terminate this war that Saudi Arabia has been involved in in Yemen against the Houthis. He's looking for a solution that includes an Israeli ceasefire and at least some steps toward a Palestinian state. And that, in turn, unlocks the door for recognition of Israel. So to him, Iran is an annoyance offstage. Unfortunately, as Americans are killed, that's amping up. Ultimately, he will be a, a force uh, for good in helping solve this over time.